Welcome everyone to this week's episode of Encounter with God Together. I have with me one of my board members, Reverend Richard Hasselback. Hi, Richard. Good to have you here. And it's nice to be here. Thank you so much. Thanks for the You're invitation. Welcome. Thank you. And um, each week we uh, do this audio and video podcast going through the readings in our daily Bible reading guide called Encounter with God. And so i um, just happy to have Richard here. Richard has written a book that many of you may have ordered and gone through during Lent. And so um, I want to thank you, Richard, for, for giving that oh, to, the, to the work of Scripture Union. It's my pleasure. Maybe I'll, I'll get around to writing another one this year. And There you go. Also that give would, it to you. <laughs> <laughs> that would be great. That would be so great. And he's also a pastor in New York State. And so, Richard, it's really nice. I, I would like to pray for you before we get going here. And I would love that. Okay. Father, I, I do want to thank you for Richard for his many gifts as a pastor, as a teacher, as a writer, and uh, as a board member. And I pray that as he speaks tonight through your word and through your spirit, that you will um, you will give him the, the things to say that we need to hear and that you'll speak uh, through him. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 And so go ahead, Richard. Uh, I, I, as I, and I, I, I have Jeremiah five in front of me now. And when I read it, the first thing I thought was how, how contemporary this is. Yes. Uh, the, the, this, this is written by Jeremiah six centuries before Christ, but at a time that's not a whole lot different from our own. It, it's a time of, of terrible upheaval and, 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 and he's living in a corrupt society. And that corrupt society is the society that's formed by God uh, with his people. So, so the faithful God is looking at an unfaithful people and saying, hold on now. Yeah. Uh, this is something I can't tolerate. And so there have to be ramifications for the evil that you allow. And, um, I, I, I was reading something in another context a couple of weeks ago, and the author the author said, we will be ruled by what we tolerate. Mm. If we tolerate corruption, we'll be ruled by the corrupt. And if we tolerate perversity, we will be ruled by the perverse. And I think what I see in this passage from Jeremiah is an age where the people of God have have fallen away from true worship and they have begun to tolerate corruption and they tolerate perversity and they have uh, and, and they worship that which is not god the the, mm. the the great sin of of the scriptures and you find it in the old testament and the new is the sin of placing other things objects or ends in the place of God. When we allow ourselves to be ruled by the gods of this world, mm. then the true God um, will, will respond. Because the other thing I see in this passage is that God is a God who is involved with his people, mm. a God who's involved in history, a God who will not be mocked and who will not tolerate us uh, swerving from, from genuine worship and placing other gods like the God of money, like the God of power, like the God of, of, of pleasure uh, on the throne that only belongs to the God of Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, and Jesus. Mm. And, 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 and so, but, 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 but there's hope in this passage. The, the prophets always say um, to, to a faithless age, God will come in judgment with punishment. So there are consequences for our sinfulness. There are consequences for our faithlessness. There are consequences for our infidelity. And, and you see the, the types of infidelity that God is concerned about in this passage. Injustice. Mm -hmm. You know, where are the people who care about the little guys? Where, where, where is the true sense of compassion and decency? He, Jeremiah is not finding it in Jerusalem. And I think you'd have a hard time finding a lot of it in Washington, D.C. or Albany, New York, or in a lot of our great cities. 
where people are just spinning out of control following false gods mm. um, and, 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 and putting up with uh, corruption, evil, and, and, and it, 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 in the end here, you see it at every level. You see, you see the, uh, let me see if I find it. Your crimes have perverted these things. Your sins have turned back these blessings from you. And, and the words in, in Hebrew, the, the crimes, the, your wanderings, you wander away from the path of righteousness. And, and your sins, um, the, the Hebrew word is hatat, it means to miss the mark. Mm. You, you're off course. Mm. And, um, and, and, and so Jeremiah is in the one, in, the one, on the, on, in one sense saying, come back. Come back to God, but but he's also saying, you know, f for the for the sins that have been committed, for the for the failures, for the for the perversity, for the for the corruption, there will be consequences, and that consequence is the the uh, the wolf, the and, and it's a reference to Nebuchadnezzar and the Babylonians, and it's gonna and there will be an exile involved. Here. Mm. Mm -hmm. But 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 Jeremiah also, and it's God speaking through his prophet says, I'm not going to destroy you completely because there will always be a return. There, I'm always open to you coming back to me. So when you repent, I will welcome you. I'm going to tear down the walls of your city, your, your, your defenses, but I'm, I'm not going to tear them down completely because uh, I want you to live and not die. And I want my people to survive and come back to me and flourish. So the prophets always start with, um, with, with a message of judgment, and they always end with a message of hope. Mm. And, and, and the message of hope isn't loud and clear, and this is only the beginning of, of Jeremiah, but Jeremiah too gets back to, gets back to um, that hope-filled notion that the God who judges and the God who punishes is most of all the God who loves and forgives and who restores and is ready to start again. Mm. You know, Richard, I I couldn't help but be struck in some of these passages where, where God says, you know, again and again I called, again and again I called, I reached out and you wouldn't listen, you didn't hear me, you, you know. And, you know, I think a lot of times people think that God is absent, but if we're um, reflective, I think we know when when God is calling out to us. Oh, you know, God God constantly calls, and you see it in Jeremiah. You see it today. I mean, we ha we live in a society. We live in a world that has gone. Or it's run amok, and it's run amok in large measure because we are forgetting hmm. the God who loves us, who created us. And who, excuse me, who calls us to be his holy people. And the word holy means different, other. Set apart. Set apart, right. Yeah. So we're not set apart if, if all we do is go to church one day a week and then live the rest of the week like, you know, like, like our, our Christianity doesn't mean a thing to us. Mm -hmm. yeah, which is why devotions like, uh, encounter with God are so important because they put the the presence and the power of God and the call of God in front of us every day, and and, and they allow us to 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 focus on on, mm. on 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 God's righteousness and God's holiness and our response to it, which mm -hmm. is being His holy people, which is living with compassion, which is living uh, with with a sense of of uh, love for the least of our brothers and sisters, for the people who are most in need. Um, it, it's, it's living uh, with, a, with a, a passion to forgive like the God who, who forgives so readily. So, so you know, Jer Jeremiah calls out Israel because, because they're forgetting all this, uh, caught up in the materialism uh, of the day. Uh, mm. uh, uh, why should I pardon you these things? Your sons have forsaken me. They swear by gods that are not. 
Um, I, I fed them, but they committed adultery uh, to, the, to the harlot's house. And that's probably a reference to ritual prostit prostitution, uh, which was so prevalent in uh, paganism uh, of that time. Mm. Um, so th there's, a, th there's a, a forsaking of the way of God here, a rebellion against God. And God says, I will act. And, and the frightening thing, I think, for America and for the world in 2023 is that we are also running amok and God will act. Hmm. Um, and, and the only way to avoid his judgment is to return to him, uh, to live lives founded in scripture, to live lives um, um, based in, uh, rooted in the gospel, and, and to remember <clears throat> that we are not on, on earth to do anything less than be disciples of Christ. And disciples of Christ learn every day how to be more Christ-like. Hmm. And, and as we do that, disciples make disciples because we are all commissioned by the Lord to make disciples of all nations. The, way, the best way to do that is to live faithfully the discipled life ourselves. That's it. That's it. And, and repent when we don't. Because... And, and, and repent <laughs> when we don't. That's absolutely correct. Yeah. Yeah. And the word well, repentance, of course, means to reorient ourselves. As the, as the word sin in this text means to miss the mark uh the, the repentance means to um to be back on target so that yeah. we 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 are aligned with the righteousness of god mm. and the only way to do that is to be in his word yeah in, in community with others that's good that's great and i know you um you're a faithful um pastor to your congregation and keep them engaged and uh, it's a high oh. calling you have oh i'm i'm blessed god is god is good to me and uh and and uh, i'm i'm the, the spirit takes over because uh left to left to my own devices i'm not all that good that's that's i rely on the lord indeed same same so <laughs> Richard, would you pray for our um, for our readers and listeners this week as they as they just take in the, the would, chapters ahead? I would be honored to. Thank you, Creator God. You promised through your through your sacred author James that we will never be denied wisdom when we ask for it. Mm. And so I ask for wisdom for every single person who is journeying uh, with the encounter with God. And, and I ask that you, you fill each one of them with the spirit of your understanding, with the spirit of wisdom, with the spirit that, that will deepen their faith in you, in your son, and in the spirit that dwells within our hearts because you have given us everything we need for our life to be, to be holy. You have given us your spirit and you've made us in your image. And for all of this, we give you thanks in Jesus name and through the spirit with you, there one God forever and ever. Amen. 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 Thank you so much, Richard. For Thank you very much. And thanks for, for inviting me to be with you again. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we'll it's have always you back a pleasure. Again. And I'm, I'm ready at a moment's notice. <laughs> All right. And have a wonderful week, everyone. You have too. a great week. God and, bless uh, everyone. We'll see you next week. Amen. Bye for now. Bye.